www.patreon.com forward slash donate. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. All praise is due to Allah. We praise Him. We seek His help. We ask Allah for His forgiveness and for His mercy. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our own selves and from the evils of our wrong actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray. Whomsoever is left to go astray, none other than Allah can guide them. I bear witness and I testify that there is no deity, no God that is worthy of worship but Allah. And I bear witness and I testify that Prophet Muhammad, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and upon all of the previous prophets and messengers, that he is the final messenger, the final prophet, the seal of the prophets and messengers that was sent, that was commissioned by God, that was commissioned by Allah to all of mankind. Brothers and sisters in Islam, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, inshallah ta'ala, we are talking about a very important topic, a topic that is, uh, should be indeed, should be indeed to uh, every Muslim, male or female, the old and the young. And the topic is dua. Dua, which means supplication or invocation or beseeching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. Now, uh, in Islam, dua or calling upon Allah is deemed as an act of worship. So even though you're asking for yourself or for your community or for somebody else, that is actually deemed an act of worship. And the evidence for this, the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, he said, الدُّعَاءُ هُوَ الْعِبَادَةِ That dua is ibadah. And ibadah means worship. So a very clear cut hadith about this that, uh, that we find in Sunan al-Tirmidhi that dua is ibadah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves it when we ask Him. Because that actually shows the relationship between the, 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 the abd and the ma'bud, the, the, the slave and uh, the one that is, that, that, that the one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who deserves to be um, asked. So it is encouraging Islam to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with respect to all things. And that um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, He becomes angry when we don't ask Him. Now we have um, a verse from the Quran, Quran whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ In Surah Ghafir, chapter 40, in the 60th uh, verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your Lord said, Invoke me and I will respond to your invocation. So, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, there are many uh, uh, dua that we find that have been articulated by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that are very comprehensive, that are very beneficial, that are, that are very therapeutic, at least for the soul um, and for physical, uh, for physical ailments. So, alhamdulillah, uh, the concept of dua and calling upon Allah is not only limited to prayers, that is, uh, words that we say within the prayer, but it's also something that we do outside of prayer, that we do in many aspects of our lives. SubhanAllah, we have a dua, you know, even before entering the lavatory, even before relieving yourself, you call upon Allah, and you, you ask Allah to protect you from the evil that may be lurking in these dirty places, okay, um, in the toilet. So, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubthi wal khabaith. When you leave the toilet, ghufrana, before you have intimate relations, you know, you ask Allah to uh, protect, you know, uh, you and your the offspring from, uh, from the shaitan, from the devil. We have a dua when you come to, uh, when you ride your car to ask Allah, you know, again, we're putting our trust in the Creator. And that's what Islam is about. Islam is about that we have a connection directly with the Almighty, directly with Allah. We don't need a middle person. Um, we don't worship Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, so we, the, the, this is the beautiful thing about Islam and the, the concept of monotheism and tawheed, that Allah alone deserves to be worshipped. Yet at the same time, we acknowledge prophets, we acknowledge messages, okay, and we give them their status with, without overstepping, okay, without overstepping the boundaries. So today, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to share with you uh, 14, I'm going to share with you uh, 14 manners 
what we call in Islam, adab, adab ud dua, adab or uh, uh, manners, etiquettes related to dua. So how can we ensure that our dua is going to be accepted by the Almighty? What are the things that we can do that will, um, in, inshallah ta'ala, ensure that dua, that our supplications are going to be answered by God, that are going to be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now today inshallah ta'ala, before I do that, um, I just wanted to mention that Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala in his book Riyadu salihin he has... Um, uh, an, a book that is uh, Kitab al-Da'wat Which is a book related to supplications But he has a few chapters uh, Specific to this area Now the First chapter he says Babu fadl al-du'a'i bi dhahri al The virtue or the excellence of supplicating in one's absence You see Islam is not about being self-centered Islam is not about being selfish Islam is about loving for your brother Loving for your sister what you love for yourself and when we hear of somebody that is going through a difficult time, a challenging time, then we make dua for them. Okay? And so here um, we have a number of verses and a number of hadiths. Now, the first uh, ayah that Imam al Nawi included is the ayah whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اخْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ And those who came after them, they say, Our Lord, Rabbana, our Lord, okay, forgive us and our brethren who have preceded us in faith. So when we ask for forgiveness, we also ask to, that Allah forgives those others who, who preceded us. So again, that displays um, this, this, you know, this unity, this unity of Islam, unity of Muslims, and that's what it's about. Um, we have another verse here. Um, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He says, "Wastaghfir li dhambika walil mu'minina walil mu'minat." That and ask forgiveness for your sin and also for the sin of believing men and believing women. So a very clear cut verse. It's not just asking for Allah to forgive you, but to forgive others around you as well. Um, now I'm going to move on to, because this is a loaded topic. I, I, Subhanallah, Islam is so beautiful that you can actually dwell on so many of these points in these verses and these signs and these hadiths. Um, but the next ayah that I want to touch on is um, the ayah that is found in Surah Ibrahim. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدَيَّ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الْحِسَابِ Our Lord, forgive me and my parents and all the believers on the day when reckoning will be established. So the day that counts the most is the day of judgment. That's when we want to be forgiven and cleansed and purified of our sin. And we don't want to be standing before Allah with this, you know, load, uh, these loads of, of, of sin because it's the, these sins that can end us um, into... into to destruction, to the hellfire. So, um, very clear cut verses about the importance of asking forgiveness for other people. You know, you're talking to someone, they're telling you a problem, I'm going through a depressive moment, you know, I'm going through a trialing moment. Um, when you leave that conversation or that dialogue, straight away make dua for that person. Say, Ya Allah, you know, help him, relieve his pain, relieve his suffering, compensate him for his loss. You know, let's let's really be um, true brothers and true sisters um, in faith. And now, what's interesting, subhanAllah, what's beautiful about Islam also, is that when you make dua for others, the very fact that you've done so, you will be compensated. And in this, this next hadith um, uh, displays this. And it's the hadith that is found in Sahih Muslim. Um, Abu Darda. One of the Sahaba, he said, I heard Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that whenever a Muslim supplicates for his Muslim brother in his absence, the angels say, May the same be for you too. ما من عبد مسلم يدعو لأخيه بظهر الغيب إلا قال الملك ولك بمثل. You see, angels, one of the roles of angels, when they listen to a dua, when they hear it, they actually say and, you know, write back at you. You know, and same for you. Okay, that's what the angels. That's what the angels do. And this is a hadith that's that that's testimony to this. Um, now, when you make du'a behind your brother's back, du'a for him, of course, and not against him. 
Okay? Um, you know, you don't want to be making dua against anybody. Okay? Um, so in this, in this dua of Abu Darda, uh, sorry, in this hadith of Abu Darda, also found in Sahih Muslim, uh, the Prophet Wasallam he said, the supplication of a Muslim for his Muslim, for his brother in his absence, will certainly be answered will certainly be answered. Every time he makes a supplication for good for his brother, the angel appointed for this particular task, so there, there, are, there is an angel that is appointed regarding this, he says, Amin. Now what does Amin mean? You know, we have it in, in English, Amen. Okay, Amin means, Oh Allah, Oh God, Yani istajib. Yani, oh Allah, answer this supplication. That's what Amin means. So when people say Amin, you know, you're saying, oh Allah, accept. Now when we read Al-Fatiha, Amin isn't part of Al-Fatiha, by the way. Some people think that might think that Amin is part of Fatiha. It's not. It's a, it's just basically saying, Ya Allah, accept. It's not a verse of Surah Al-Fatiha, and really, it's, it should be restricted to the Salah. Um, so when the Imam says, Wala Dalin, okay, you say Amin. Now, Amin should only be said uh, two counts. Amin. Now, the mean part can be said can be extended for two, four, or for six counts. Okay, um, as per the rules of Tajweed of recitation, reciting the Quran. So, Amin. It's wrong when many Muslims they say Amin. That's not. It's you. You violated Tajweed rules, and you need, I think, a refresher. Okay, or a, or a 101, a Tajweed 101 course, you know. So just take it easy on your Ameens. Don't get too carried away. It's just Ameen. Okay, or, you know, depending on how long you prolong it, you know, prolong the, um, the, the mean part. Um, now, Imam Nawi rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, Babun fi masailin min ad dua He says, some verdicts pertaining to a supplication, to supplications. Now, um, he begins with a with a dua that really shouldn't be undermined or underestimated. Um, a very beautiful dua, uh, and we all know this dua, by the way, as Muslims. Okay, um, it's the hadith of Usama ibn Zayd radiallahu anhu. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "Mansuni uh, ilayhi ma'rufan faqala liqa ilihi jazak Allahu khaira wa jazak Allahu khairan." فَقَدْ أَبْلَغَ فِي الثَّنَاءِ That um, whoever has um, had a favor done to them or for them, whoever, has, uh, who, whoever is favored by another, you should say to the benefactor, you should say to them, جَزَاكَ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا What does that mean? You hear it, Allah, you know, Allah, جَزَاكَ اللَّهُ mean, May Allah uh, reward you, or may Allah compensate you with, with goodness. That's a dua. So if, if someone does an act of kindness towards you, and you are not able to reward them um, or compensate them financially or through, a, uh, or through a, an actual gift, the very least that you can say is, make a dua for them. You know, and say, Jazakallahu khaira. May Allah re- compensate you with goodness. Because Allah may answer, Allah may answer this supplication, this dua, and Allah amazes you with His blessing or with His bounty. So don't underestimate words of thanks. And this is part of the character of a Muslim. Part of the character of a Muslim is that he shows his gratitude towards people. Okay? And we have uh, the, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sorry, uh, sorry we, we, we have, the, I mean there, there is this hadith and the other one, مَنْ صُنِعَ إِلَيْكُمْ مَعْرُوفًا فَكَافِئُهُ That whoever does an act of kindness towards you, you should... Uh, uh, you know, show your gratitude towards them by compensating them. So, um, and when we thank others, this is a sign of your thankfulness towards Allah. Man lam nasa lam That whoever doesn't show their gratitude and thanks towards people, he is not of those who show their gratitude towards Allah. So, yes, thank people. Say thank you. You don't. You don't know Jazakallahu khairan. You know thank you. You know, uh, a thank you is, is very powerful, that you're acknowledging the good that that person is doing for you, that he's done out of his good will and his kindness. Um, and when you, are, when you are from amongst the shakirun or the shakirin or those who show their gratitude, Allah will give you more. Allah says in the Qur'an, in shakartum لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ That when you show your thankfulness, when you show your gratitude, Allah will give you more. 
So we have to be from amongst those who are thankful towards Allah. Thankfulness not only with our tongues, but also uh, with our hearts and with our wealth and with our time. This is how we show thanks towards others, inshallah ta'ala. So, very powerful dua. Jazakallahu khairan and jazakumullahu khairan for listening to me. Okay. Um, now, another very important dua. Okay. Uh, don't curse yourselves or others. You might regret it. Okay. There is a hadith that is found in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Do not invoke curses on yourself or on your children or on your possessions, lest you should happen to do it um, at a moment when the supplications are accepted and your prayer might be granted. So you know, some people when they're angry, you know, then they start to go off with the curses and the hand movement goes up and all those. You know, if you start to do that, you might be making a dua against yourself or against others that Allah, the doors of dua are, are open and guess what happens? That dua is accepted and you've gone cursing yourself. And therefore, you will be deprived of a, a, of a blessing. Okay? Or uh, a calamity may befall you or your children. Okay? And I don't know about in other languages, I know that the, the, the Lebanese culture or some of the Arab culture, maybe not specifically the Lebanese, but you know, um, if they're angry with their children, they say to their children, Allah yaghdab alayk. You know, they say, Allah yaghtab alayk. Yani, may Allah yani, be, be angry with you. You know, may Allah's anger come down upon you. I don't know, we have some Indonesians in the audience. Do you have anything similar to this? Huh? Maybe our Thailand, th- people from Thailand, do you have anything sim- similar to this? Maybe our Aussie friends? No, nothing? Okay, okay, so the Arabs really have got it wrong. So uh, they have to change, you know. They can't do this. You can't say, Allah yaghdab alayk. You know, may Allah's anger be upon you. This is your son. You're having a weak moment. Okay, you know, take it easy. Where's your patience? Where's your sabr? Okay, you know. So um, this is something to, to, to take heed of. Um, so there are, there are times where dua is highly... Uh, highly accepted, okay, and this is probably one of the the, the the manners that that you know we can include in the fourteen. Maybe we can make it fifteen because I can't remember including it in the fourteen. But um, let's make it fifteen, inshallah ta'ala, so it can be an odd number. And and that is that du'a should be made. I mean, it can be made at any time, but more specifically, there are times that du'a uh, is accepted. Like like for example, there's an there's an hour on Friday. Okay, that when you when you ask Allah Azza wa Jal, your du'a is highly accepted, and most scholars are of their opinion that it's between um, that it's between Asr time and and, the, and sunset, okay, Maghrib time, and others they say it's from when the Imam you know um, is is on is on the mimbar or uh, um, in the uh, after he sits or um, until the Salah in uh, on Yom al Jumu'ah. So there are some difference of opinion about when this hour, this this period of time whereby dua is um, is accepted. Okay, um, likewise the third part of the night, the third part of the night when everybody is asleep and you decide to get up and you make you know dua to Allah, your dua is highly accepted. Likewise, we're going to see that before you say assalamu alaikum in your salah and you said your Ibrahimiyah or your the Rood Sharif, as some people call it. Okay, uh, when you say a dua at that moment, this is the dubur, this is the end of the salah. This is also a, a moment that you want to, um, you know, you want to capture. Um, another another moment is in your sujood. Okay, another moment when you're in prostration, you're very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another moment is at the time of breaking your fast. Another moment is when you are a traveler. When you are a traveler, your dua is highly accepted. Another moment would be between the adhan and between the iqamah. Between adhan and iqamah, the Prophet ﷺ recommended that you make dua between these two times. Okay, so... Um, you know, the dua of an oppressed person. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Beware of the dua, of the supplication of the oppressed, for there is no barrier between it and Allah. Because that person is now being oppressed. And Allah wants to um, make this person um, compensate him for his oppression. So we have to really um, uh, be careful sometimes, you know, and, 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 and make the most out of these moments, inshaAllah ta'ala. Now, um, 
the dua whereby the Prophet or the, or the Prophet Sallallahu in Sahih Muslim he said أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدْ فَأَكْثِرُ الدُّعَاءِ He said the closest time a abd, a slave is near to Allah is when he is in prostration so increase supplications in prostrations so when you're in sujood lots of dua you know yes there's difference of opinion amongst the ulama whether you can you know you can say it in a foreign language other than arabic and some ulama to really um, consolidate they said well you know maybe you should just limit that to the sunnah salah to the optional salat and not the fard salah okay um, and then in the fard salah just restrict yourself to the dua of the prophet sallallahu and, and arabic duas that we know from the prophet sallallahu um, and also when it comes to, uh, to dua And this is one of the etiquettes that we'll talk about Is not to be hasty Don't be hasty You know subhanallah we've become a, Really we've become a drive through generation <laughs> Really I mean we want everything express mode We want it right now We're not willing to wait You know Islam really is all about patience Okay the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you know, um, you know, it took him, you know, he did dawah for 23 years. I mean, tawheed was just being, and monotheism was being propagated for 13 years before he went on to the other aspects of the deen. Um, not, nothing, nothing really happens over, overnight. If you think about anybody who's successful, if you think about any of the victories of Islam, they happened over time. Okay? Um, they don't happen, you know, success doesn't really happen overnight unless Allah Azza wa Jal has decreed it to be so. And that's not, not hard for Allah. Um, the Prophet ﷺ in this dua that we find in um, Bukhari and Muslim, he said, the supplication of every one of you will be granted if he does not get impatient and say, I supplicated my Lord, but my prayer has not been granted. So you know there's people that say, you know, I've made dua, that's it. It's not being answered. Well, keep on making dua, keep on making dua until the moment comes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will... will um, you know, will honor your dua. Um, another, another hadith, the supplication, the supplication of a slave continues to be granted as long as he does not supplicate for a sinful thing or for something that would cut off the ties of kinship and he does not grow impatient. And it was said, a messenger of Allah, what does growing impatient mean? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, it is one saying, I supplicated again and again, but I do not think that my prayer will be answered. Then he becomes frustrated in such circumstances, and he gives up the supplication altogether. Okay, so again, uh, my dear brothers and my dear sisters in Islam, okay, you never know why Allah is delaying your supplication. You might want something so badly, but there is a reason. See, Allah is your wise. God is your wise. He knows how many times have you wanted something, and we go, oh, luckily that didn't happen. You know, because I found something better. Maybe Allah has prepared something better for you. Have a positive opinion when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And don't be hasty. Okay? It may well be that that which you deem as being good is actually bad. And that which you deem as being bad is actually good. Um, also, um, what we learn is that Yani, uh, the, the best time, as I said earlier, there's a hadith here, the best time to make dua, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, um, or he was asked, at what time does the supplication find the greatest response? It's a very good question. It shows you the intelligence of the Sahaba, they ask the right questions. And um, he, وسلم, he said, a supplication made during the middle of the last part of the night and after the conclusion of the obligatory prayers. So, um, the, the last part of the night. You know, again, because that shows your sincerity and it shows your devotion and it shows your commitment. You see, I can make a dua right now. You know, it's very easy. But when you set up your alarm clock and you're going to leave and forsake your bed, you're going to forsake your comfort, okay? And you're prepared to do all that and you're going to get up and you're going to make wudu ablution and you're going to pray and you're going to stand before Allah while everybody else is asleep, you know, that, that really says something. That really is a, 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 is a very powerful gesture and, a, and statement. So, um, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, this is the best time to make dua at night. Now, the next hadith, um, basically... And what we learn that that um, when it comes to du'a, 
there are, in this hadith there are two possible scenarios that either your dua is granted or consequently as a result of your dua an, an evil is averted okay but we're also going to learn a collective